about 100 years ago, when women in Japan had no right to vote. And arranged marriages were considered a way to improve the prosperity and social standing of families. There was a young woman who created a national sensation by writing unreservedly about the feelings of young women in love. In this video, we will introduce Akiko Yosano. She is one of the most popular, yet controversial, post-classical poets, devoted to improving both the social status and educational opportunities of women. In addition to being a nationally recognized artist, she was the mother of 13 children and the household's primary breadwinner at a time, in the early 20th century, when such demanding balancing acts were rare. Akiko Yosano was born in Sokai, Osaka, in 1878. She was the third daughter of a wealthy Japanese confectioner. Sokai had developed as a commercial city, and people were open and enthusiastic about education. At the age of seven, Akiko entered a primary school. And at the age of nine, she attended a Kanjuku, which was a private school that taught Chinese Shuji and Confucian studies. She also learned some traditional musical instruments, such as the koto and shamisen. From early childhood, she was fond of reading literary works and spent hours exploring the full breadth of her father's extensive library. At the age of 20, Akiko began to compose waka poems and submitted them to magazines, whilst helping out with her parents' business. When she was 21, Akiko and her friend, Tamiko Yamakawa, participated in a gathering of tanka poets, organized by a rising star of the form, Tekken Yosano. Tekken was a pioneer of romanticism in Japanese poetry. His style was characterized by a process of self-release that led to the raw expression of feelings. He had set up a magazine called Miyojo six months prior and was visiting Osaka to promote it and recruit new contributors, fellow poets who agreed with his ambition to reform traditional Japanese poetry, give it more originality and make it more interesting to young people. As the children of wealthy families, both Akiko and Tamiko had grown up in comfortable but highly restricted environments. The need to follow the strict instructions of their parents almost inevitably made them feel like rare birds in a gilded cage. Imagine how attractive this passionate romantic, just six years older than them, must have appeared. It wasn't long before, both women adopted him as an inspirational mentor. The three would meet often and take short trips. Predictably perhaps, despite Tekken already having a common-law wife, both young women fell hopelessly in love with him. Miyojo magazine published a tanka poem that introduced Akiko as a new romantic poet. It expressed her deep feelings for Tekken and was shortly followed by Tamiko's work on the same theme. Scandalous love affairs were as attention-grabbing then as they are today. Of course Tekken was delighted that this had put his literary revolution in the spotlight and increased sales of the magazine. He published passionate responses to both poems, which led to an extended back and forth. In 1900, Tomiko agreed to marry a suitable match chosen by her parents and withdrew from this flirtatious exchange, prompting Akiko to finally enter a sexual relationship with Tekken, pouring fuel on the fire of her amorous, literary output. But then an anonymous muckraking article appeared, claiming that Tekken had two common-law wives and had been borrowing as much money as he could against the value of their parents' homes. When Akiko's father read this, he was furious and declared that he would force her marry the son of a wealthy family. But after hearing that Tekken's wife had left him, Akiko decided to run away from home. Abandoning her home, she moved into her lover's house in Tokyo. 
Even after they began to live together, Tekken often exchanged letters with his ex-wife. And became depressed, after hearing that, Tomiko had married in Osaka. Akiko realized that, like a small child, in relationships he was incredibly greedy. Two months after Akiko moved in, Tekken published Akiko's first tanker book, called Midaregami, or Tangled Hair. The poems expressed the joy, guilt, conflict, and jealousy, of her torrid love life. The shocking combination of deeply personal life experiences, brimming with youthful passion, shocked the Japanese public, and of course, turned the book into a bestseller. In particular, Akiko won the hearts of young people, and has inspired subsequent generations of women, to express their true feelings. On the other hand, celebrated male poets and some critics, dismissed her work, as a filthy rubbish. In 1901, two months after the publication of Midare Gami, Akiko married Tekken at the age of 22. When Japan entered the war with Russia in 1904, Akiko's younger brother was sent to the front. Tekken encouraged his wife to express her feelings in a poem and publish it. In a work entitled, My Brother, You Must Not Die, she writes. Brother, do not die. You are the youngest child, and received the love of our parents more than anyone else. Did they teach you to kill someone? Then, as now soldiers shipping out, were told to kill as many enemy combatants as possible, but the highest honor was to die in the process. Families were forced to believe, that sending their son to war, was a cause for celebration. Akiko was condemned as a traitor, for writing what was seen as an anti-war poem. But Akiko refused to back down. Poems that don't describe people's true feelings, have no value. She insisted. What kind of person would actually want to send their beloved child to the battlefield, with a celebratory cheer and the hopes, that they will bring honor to the family name with a premature death? Many ordinary people, most especially wives and mothers, supported her stance as the honest feelings of women. But few, dared to endorse her work publicly. Tekken met with the respected scholar, who was Akiko's fiercest critic, and managed to calm the situation considerably. Akiko's brother did in fact return safely, took over the family business, and lived to the age of 63. Miyojo means morning star or prominent talent. And as this name suggests, the magazine produced many talented poets, such as Tokuboku Ishikawa and Kotaro Takamura. However, the radiance of this star publication gradually faded, with the mass defection of celebrated poets, more anonymous muckraking documents about Tekken, and the rise of literary naturalism that attacked growing wealth inequality and social unrest. The circulation, which had been between 5,000 and 7,000 at its peak, fell to 1,200 in 1905. While Akiko's popularity grew, Tekken increasingly attracted disrespect from their community. To make ends meet, Akiko accepted any kind of paid writing offer, from novels to children's books. She wrote and wrote, all day, every day, to pay bills, and look after their children. Although their marriage was fraying, she was pregnant almost every year until she was 40. She gave a birth to 13 children, and miraculously, 11 survived into adulthood. In these difficult circumstances, her old friend Tomiko came to visit, after her own husband had died of tuberculosis. Tekken proposed to publish a book, of their collective work. Akiko had a bad feeling about this, but agreed to support her friend. However, Akiko discovered that Tekken had stayed with Tomiko at an inn, after news spread of her friend vomiting blood. 
Accusations were brushed aside, with the excuse that Akiko's success was intimidating to those around her. And Tekken steadfastly refused to give up his relationship with Tomiko. Akiko was astonished and sought solace in caring for her children. Her husband was away from home more and more. But a short time later, Tomiko died of tuberculosis. In 1908, Miyojo finally came to the end, with issue 100. Devastated, Tekken spent every day in despair, doing nothing. Noticing her husband was very interested in studying French. Akiko suggested that he should go on a study tour to Europe, including France. After managing to raise money to cover his expenses by collecting donations from publishers, family and friends, or publishing some collections of her tanker poems, Akiko succeeded in sending him to Paris in 1911. In the same year, Akiko published a poem in a magazine called Sato, or Blue Stocking, which was a literary magazine, promoting equal rights for women through literature and education. In this poem, Akiko wrote, The day has come when the mountain will move. All women who have slept for such a long time is are now awake and begin to move. Following the publication of Akiko's poem, the government set up an organization called the Literary Committee under the guise of making written works more accessible to the public. However, their actual purpose was to monitor literary works for seditious ideas. This led to Akiko becoming increasingly antagonistic towards the government. She anticipated getting a lot of work done once her husband was gone, but missed him so much that she couldn't focus on anything. Six months later, she received a letter from Tekken, who was in Paris. It said come and join me. She recalled how she felt when she left her parents home to be with him. Scraping together the funds, she left her seven children in the care of her relatives and set off for France. Together, they toured major European cities, including London and Brussels. The poetry composed in Europe appears to be written by a teenager in love, not the mother of seven children. Although the trip restored their fractured marriage, Akiko was inspired by the very different lifestyles and attitudes of European women. She realized that Japan's attempts at westernization tended to focus only on superficialities, not matters of substance, and began to think about how could she contribute to creating a society in which Japanese women could live with confidence and vitality. After returning from Paris in 1914, Akiko and Tekken co-authored, From Paris, in which they stressed the importance of education for women. Akiko began to write social commentaries, and in the broad liberation movement that became known as, the Taisho Democracy. In this context, Akiko engaged in a debate that later became known as, the women's protection controversy. Raicho Hiratsuka, who was a central figure in the women's liberation movement and editor-in-chief of the Blue Stocking magazine. She argued that the state should protect motherhood during pregnancy, childbirth and child rearing. Akiko rejected this idea, arguing that all women should be independent and that state protection was a new form of slavery that would make mothers answerable to men. This controversy continued for some time, due to the participation of socialists, Kikue Yamakawa, and maternal protectionist, Waka Yamada. However, Tekken advised Akiko to quietly return to her original creative field as a poet. Ironically, she followed his advice, realizing that the enemy was a society that denied women the means and opportunity to live freely. 
But from this point on, Akiko began to think more deeply about the importance of women's education. In 1921, Akiko and Tekken were involved in the establishment of Japan's first coeducational school, Bunkagakuin, or cultural school. They aimed to create a free and original school that was not guided by the state. The school offered an extraordinarily unique educational program. For example, many teaching staff consisted of renowned cultural figures, novelists, architects, composers, and poets, including Akiko, Tekken, and a number of foreign teachers. The school was nicknamed Utopia by admiring students and became a symbol of freedom, intelligence, and art. Unfortunately, the school closed in 2018, but over the years produced numerous famous artists, writers, actors, and musicians. In an age when schools have become vocational training centers for employment, it is likely that education focused on fostering critical thinking, individuality, and freedom is simply deemed unnecessary. Akiko's life's work was the translation of a literary classic. In the same way that modern English speakers find Anglo-Saxon almost impossible to understand, ancient Japanese is very difficult for modern readers to understand. The tale of Genji is an ancient fable of aristocratic Japanese society that was inaccessible to many before Akiko set about translating it. In her 30s, she published her first translation, but within a few years, realized that she had misinterpreted many parts of the book. At the age of 43, she set about revising her translation. However, during the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1924, the school where she was teaching caught fire, and the 4,000 manuscripts that were close to completion were lost. In response to her depression, Tekken succeeded in persuading to start all over again. The couple often traveled together in later life to deliver lectures or participate in poetry meetings. These were good sources of income, but above all, Akiko enjoyed spending peaceful time with her husband. When Akiko was 56, her husband died at the age of 62. Devastated, she gave up sitting in front of her desk for a while. When eventually she picked up her pen again, she worked like a woman possessed. She completed the entire 4,000-page manuscript within four years, at the age 60. Almost 40 years had passed since she first became involved in this project. Akiko's translations became invaluable when famous novelists, such as Jun Ichiro Tanizaki and Jack Choseto Uchi, took on translating the tale again for future generations. In 1942, Japan was in the midst of war once more. Its intellectual and literary culture was brutally policed by the equivalent of Nazi Germany's Gustavo, the Kempei Tai. After all the energy she had expended in completing the translation, Akiko's health went into steep decline. She suffered a second cerebral hemorrhage that left her paralyzed, and she died at the age of 63, just two years after completing her final project. A truly passionate poet, Akiko left more than 50,000 individual works and hundreds of social commentaries. Her writing is characterized by the expression of raw, unfiltered emotion that at time can appear almost childish in its purity. This was especially brave and shocking in a society that even to this day remains conservative and goes to extraordinary lengths to conceal true feelings. Much of her work focuses on the tempestuous relationship with her husband, Tekken, who consistently shared her aesthetic and intellectual passions, 
even if he didn't always share her bed. In our contemporary, connected world of continuous partial attention, it's rare that anyone feels that they have time to set down all, but the most superficial, and sentimental explorations of their emotional state, via social media. Places where the pursuit of approval and empathy, often outweighs any loftier sense of purpose. At times of great upheaval and social change, it is often poets, who usher in new ways of thinking and feeling. And Akiko Yosano is no exception. Without her overarching message, that it's okay to be your true self, and to express all of your pleasure and pain freely, perhaps Japan would still be entirely corseted by a browbeating culture of tarts and whispers. <laughs>